eat a little and you will be satisfied. And the amazing thing is that uh, when you go into phase number two and you say, okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to eat healthy foods and stop eating the junk that I ate first three months. You will be surprised that even healthy foods now start to taste good. You do not have that much desire for that junk you used to eat. You will be able to do that as well. Eat nutritious foods rather than um, foods that are deprived of any nutrition. So first three months you have to watch out uh, that you have nutrients on board that you exercise. That will start the process of anti-aging. This is one of the best things that you will ever do for yourself. Not going to doctors, not your hormones. I can tell you, this is one thing I am willing to put my signature on it. This is probably the greatest thing that will ever happen to you, if you can do it. Now it brings up the question, it's not easy to do. Despite the fact that it sounds relatively simple, to do it's not easy to do for most of us. Like I said, it has become a form of mental illness as a behavior problem. How do we deal with it? I'm going to give you a cliche now, which you're not going to like. You say, oh, I heard about this before. You do it through the power of your mind. And you're going to say, well, what is that power? People write books about this. What is that power of your mind? Is this some kind of bull crap that people talk about? Is this something real? I'll tell you the whole just in 15 seconds. The power of your mind is, is understanding. And understanding is being in control. And once you are in control, you are now in charge. And once you are in charge, you control your own destiny. And I will tell you something. When you get to that point, you don't make any efforts. It becomes a second nature. You do things effortlessly. You don't think about it. You never think it's necessary to get back on the scale because it becomes part of you. It becomes part of your person. Now the power of your mind, it's a tricky word. I said power of your mind, the power of mind is understanding. Understanding a problem deeply enough that it clicks, it kind of turns on that switch in you. You can be knowledgeable, you can read every book. How many of you have read books on weight loss? And there were wonderful stuff in there, right? You really liked it. <laughs> Dr. Phil wrote, he has the ultimate guide for weight loss. Meanwhile, he has the custom made bigger and bigger coat so he can buy, hide his belly because it grows one inch every year. None of these book writers are your friends. They know the problem in society and they want to take advantage of that. I'm not saying they shouldn't write books. I don't want to be cynical. But it's good to be cynical sometimes. You know what Bernard Shaw once said? He said, the power of accurate observation is cynicism called by those who do not guard it, who do not have it. So you should be able to look through someone's claims and understand it for yourself, not for the other, others, for yourself. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you do not understand it, it's useless. My seven-year-old son, he comes from home from school and he says, he's trying to, uh, no, you tell me the answer. He got in his head that if you get A, it doesn't matter how you get A, A plus. So I, he doesn't, I mean, he's young, doesn't get it. I said, forget about A. I'll be happy if you get all C's throughout your life. If you do not understand this thing, you will waste. How many people have PhD degrees and 
They're very smart. They know everything, but they know nothing. <laughs> how often you hear Harvard professor, he, he came home, he killed his family, then he shot himself. <laughs> so there is a very subtle difference between knowledge and understanding. Knowledge is a waste if you do not understand what the real issue is. Understanding is power. And what understanding does for you, it, it gives you control. Isn't the whole issue about control? You are not in control. You do not feel that your life is in control because you read yourself through the minds of others. Other people control your life. Your husband controls your life. Your wife controls your life. You go by how other people perceive you. You look upon this world through the brains of others, other people's perceptions, not your own. You have to ask yourself, I want to lose weight for me. I don't give a damn what other people think. I want to lose weight because it's good for me. So it's extremely important to be in control, to be in charge of your own destiny. Do not do favors to other people, do favor to yourself. What you have to do is to win your own heart first. Do not try to win the hearts of others. Do not try to please your spouse or your friends or people at your work. If you cannot please yourself, can you possibly please other people? And even if you could, is it worth it? Is, is it stupidity or what? Be selfish. You know what selfish means? Be yourself. Selfish means be yourself. We were born that way. It's okay to be selfish. It's not criminal to be selfish. Because if you are not, then there is no one out there who will look out for you. You have to take responsibility for yourself. Forget about what other people see you as. This understanding will give you a tool. It's a magic tool that will allow you for the first time in your life to start to get off depression medications, to get off anxiety medication, to start sleeping better. Your self-esteem is up. There is nothing that will come in your way and you can do it. How many of you think that it's a genetic problem. You know, I can't do it, but even the power of mind. There are some people out there who uh, have some uh, special endowment from God who can control their mind. I can't do it. Poor me, you know, there's something fundamentally, I, I inherited the crappy genes. How many of you think that that is true? Please honestly raise your hand. How many of you think that, that the problem is in your genes? You, you got bad genes, you know, there's nothing you can do. You, you are so ashamed, you don't, don't want to raise your hands, right? <laughs> I would like to debunk that myth of people being smarter and people being stupid. That is absolutely not true. On the one hand, it is true that the genes that you inherit, it's a language written in secret and you can't get away with, from it. So how can it be true that on the one hand, we are slaves to our genetic predisposition, on the other hand, I'm saying that is not true. How can two go together? It turns out that it's absolutely true. The genes that you inherit determines everything. In 1957, when we figured out the structure of DNA from a crystal through X-ray crystallography for the first couple of day, a couple of decades, even up to 80s, 
the conception was that genes control everything. You are doomed. <laughs> and in some ways that is true. Genes do control everything. But when we started doing more research on this, quite the opposite was true. You know, if you clone a person, if I could clone you, your exact copy of body and mind, you will be still different. Why is that? Do you ever wonder why twins born same day, identical twins, they are different? Their personalities, they are same in some ways. If one scratch their cheek all the time, the other one will do the same thing. But they are still very different. Why is that? Because it's the environment. Now we are learning that the myth of genetic predisposition is not true. Maybe genes will play about 5% of the role in your life. No more than 5%. 95% of what happens in your life is your environment and you. Yes, it's your social environment. Yes, it's your economic and the familial environment, but it's also you. It's the interaction really between you and your environment that's going to determine what's going to happen to you. So this myth that some people have genes that they are born a musical genius or they are born as a mathematical genius, We know that some people are born with certain genes that are kind of more active. There is a natural desire to learn mathematics in some children. Some are very young and they kind of have talent for music. But it turns out that we all have the same genes. In the future, we will be at will be able to turn on certain genes and turn off certain genes. But that's medicine of the future. The planet Earth, when was it born? We know now. So the question was, is there a gene that one day turns on and say, it's time to grow old, it's time to get sick, and it's time to die. Is there a gene? They looked for that gene, they looked for it, they looked and looked and looked, and they didn't find one. There is no such gene. That's kind of encouraging news. Now let's go to the next step and find out if there's no such gene that is called a death gene. Why do we grow old, get sick, and eventually die? And those of us who are not, never going to get sick, still going to die. Do you know more people die of aging than illness? We all think we are, every single one of us are going to die one day because either I'm going to have a heart attack or stroke or something terrible is going to happen and I'm going to die. Not everybody dies like that. Still, overall statistics are most people die of aging, which means one day you just going to drop dead. <laughs> you cannot live forever, even though you were the healthiest person. You are 180 years old, you're going to die in your sleep. And there was nothing wrong with you. So uh, after doing a lot of research, they found out that actually there are about three processes that eventually kill all species. Why some species live a lot, lot longer than others? There was a very simple explanation that in each species, the repair genes, remember, come back to repair genes. Some rare repair genes are more active. In others, they are not as active. So depending upon how your DNA is functioning, or how fast it deteriorates will determine how fast you're going to die. What is the rate of mutations in your DNA? It's going to determine how you die. There are about three processes through which all species die. One of them is glycosylation which is technical, I won't go into it, will spoil the lecture if I go into the detail. Another one is apostosis, which means basically cell death. And what happens when